What's up guys? Today we're going to look at this recent study that compared training to failure versus training with reps in reserve, why I don't think the results are that practically relevant, and why I hate the conclusions being paraded around on social media. But first, a word from my sponsor. Hey you, like this video, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, you fucking guy. Alright, so first of all, I don't want to position myself as some kind of an anti-science gym bro. Hey, just go to the gym, do some stuff, train hard, you'll be all right, you fucking guy. I'm not anti-science, I'm not anti-research. I find it all very interesting, I like reading it. I just usually don't think the results are that practically relevant to my training or the training of others. And I usually hate the conclusions that get drawn, which are usually unwarranted and inaccurate. So let's have a look at what they did here comparing training to failure versus training with reps in reserve. So they started with trained subjects, which is a good thing, all right? These guys had, I think, eight plus years of lifting experience, which I like. They divided them into two groups. One group did all their sets to failure. The other group did their sets with one to two reps in reserve. They did 13 total sets for the quads. So the first thing that jumps out at me is they like to use the quads. And I don't know how many of you guys uh, train your quads to failure 13 times a week, but that's a fucking bitch. All right? It's not like training your biceps or your triceps or your back or your calves or your shoulders. Training your quads, your largest muscle group to failure with that much volume is a bitch. That's very systemically fatiguing. And I think it would be a much different story if we were using different muscle groups. But I digress, and that's not even my main point. So what did the study find? The study found that between the two groups, hypertrophy, muscle growth, was almost identical. It was 6.96% growth in the failure group and 6.98% in the reps and reserve group. But there was more systemic fatigue in the failure group. No shit. Taking all of your sets to failure, especially with the quads, is obviously going to be more systemically fatiguing. So what they've done here is create a this or that scenario. You either do all of your sets with reps and reserve or all of your sets to failure. And no shit, surprise, surprise, you have more systemic fatigue training every single set to failure. So the conclusion that they're coming up with and throwing around on social media is that training with reps and reserve is better than training to failure. And that's completely inaccurate and unwarranted and not justified by this study at all. The correct conclusion should be that taking all of your sets to failure with the quads will result in more systemic fatigue than training with reps and reserve, and that hypertrophy will be about the same across both groups. The reason it's not practically relevant is because no serious trainer or coach or lifter is taking all of their sets to failure and not balancing out volume in the process. Of course, if you do an equal amount of 13 sets with some reps and reserve versus taking them all to failure with a big muscle group like the quads, of course you're gonna get this result. There's zero shock value here, like anybody should have been able to predict that that would happen. It's crucial, really important as a lifter, as a coach, as a trainer, that you don't look at these studies and just look at the conclusion they're drawing and take it at face value as fact, all right? You have to actually think about these things and their practical relevance, how it applies to your training, your programming, or the training of the people that are underneath you. You know, I don't think anyone's out there saying, fuck it, YOLO, I'm just gonna take all my sets to failure, I'm not gonna change the volume or anything else, and I'm gonna expect great results. That's not a thing, all right? And it's stuff like this that makes me value time in the trenches, like actual experience versus these studies, which don't really have that much relevance practically in training or coaching. You really have to think critically about this stuff and kind of acknowledge that all the science, everything that's come out in the last 5, 10, 12 years, has it really had any impact on the way we train in the gym or that we coach others? And I'll say it really, really doesn't that much. I mean, one of the biggest problems is that there's a low ceiling for it. Because no matter what you do in these studies, you always have to do it with these extremes, like all to failure or all with reps and reserve. And there's just too many variables to account for. The human beings are, are living organisms, all right? There's so many variables that you cannot account for that matter a lot. For example, what would have happened in the failure group if they rested two, three minutes longer between sets? You don't know. And the reason these heated debates rage on, you know, people always want definitive answers to things often where definitive answers are never going to be found, right? People cling to the whole Mike Menser intensity stuff or the really high volume stuff, the reps in reserve, but there's never going to be clear answers. The principle of individual difference states that, you know, every person is different, different stimulus will work differently for different people, depending on all kinds of factors. So you're never going to get the answer you're looking for through science, all right? You're going to get those answers in the trenches through experimenting on yourself like a guinea pig through coaching hundreds of people and just straight time in the trenches is a million times more valuable 
than all these studies combined. And that's definitely my stance on it. It's not that the science is irrelevant, it's super interesting, it has value. You just have to be able to view it in context as far as its practical relevance to your actual training. So in reality, the truth is that both training to failure and training with reps and reserve should have a place in your programming. You should be utilizing both. Training to failure has advantages that you can't find elsewhere, all right? For one thing, it's the most measurable way to gauge progress in the gym. If you take a set to failure, it's absolute. I was only able to get eight reps at 200 pounds, period. If I can get nine reps next week, I made progress. It's a little bit harder to do with reps and reserve. All right, so combining those two, you should be hitting a good amount of your volume with a rep or two in reserve, but you should also be taking some of your sets to failure. Something like two sets with at eight to nine RPE, and maybe your final set of the lift to failure. Another thing you can look at in this study is the exercise order. They did the leg press first and the vastus lateralis, the outer part of the quad, <clears throat> experienced more muscle growth in the failure group. And there's something to that. They did the leg extension second. So exercise order does matter. Which exercises you're taking to failure matters. And those are things you gotta think about when you program your training. So instead of being extremists, like most people have a tendency to do, it's human nature, we all end up polarized on one side or the other. You should look at this stuff in totality, in a holistic way, all right? How am I gonna program my training? Where am I going to place intensity, all right? That's really important. What am I gonna take to failure and why? If you can answer those questions, you can strategically place you know, this stuff into your programming and try to get as optimal as possible. We more or less know exactly what leads to hypertrophy as far as training goes. Right? It's mechanical tension. That means if you're performing strict reps, the weight should slow down as you fatigue rep after rep, and that those reps towards the end as you approach failure are the ones that are gonna lead to muscle growth. I think that's pretty much undisputed at this point. If you disagree, then go do a bunch of warm-up sets for a few months and see if you grow. You won't. So we need to achieve you know, maximum muscle fiber recruitment. That's gonna happen towards the end of a set as the weight slows down, right? That's force velocity. And that's about it. You don't have to overthink the shit. All right, train at eight to nine RPE, strategically take sets to failure, make progress in the gym, and you're gonna grow. If you found this video helpful or entertaining or all of the above, go ahead and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. Like and comment. Thanks for being here. See you next time.